Uh, Senator Moody, followed by Senator Bury, followed by Senator Petticlair. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Senator Belmar, I, I just want to dig a little bit more about Canada's experience in this area. Are there other areas where um, embedding social dialogue within institutions has been successful? What is the federal government's experience with this? Right. Um, if it's not commonplace at the, at the federal level, what held us back from going in this direction? And what problems might we run into at the federal level? That's a very, very, very good question. And it's a question that I've been asking myself for a long, long time. Because uh, in the history of the EI, unemployment insurance, unemployment insurance was enacted in 1940 as a, a tripartite agency. Okay? It was run by government, by representative of unions, and representative of employers. And for a long time, it was standalone agency. But then it became covered by the department. And there was a restructuration all the time. And at, through time, this agency, they lost their autonomy. Mm -hmm. They became part of the department. And they had a commission that, that was bigger than, than it was now. And it lost power through time. And um, it always, uh, the, the best uh, perspective on that was written by Donna Woods, uh, an expert of uh, public policy. She unfortunately died during COVID time. But uh, she s explained how the logic of the administration of EI succeeded in taking it out of the partners. And uh, so this is what happened with EI. But International convention that Canada signed explicitly states that for EI and employment policy related activities, partners of the labor mar market should be part of it because they are part of the solution to solve problem in the labor market. It's not through the knowledge of statistic alone. It's in the knowledge of what is doing. Because EI is included in the strategical thinking of human resource management in enterprises. Mm -hmm. And it is also included sometimes in the professional mobility items or policies that can incentivize people to learn or not to learn, to go to the labor market or so. Thank having you. Said that, Thank you very much. Sorry to be the green chair. <laughs> Senator Moody. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to witnesses today for being here. So I think so far we've been hearing remarkable consensus on this bill. Kudos to, to Senator Bern, Belmar. Um, but I want us to focus on the bill just a little bit more, if you will. Are you happy with the legislation as it's written for its application here in Canada? I know we look outward and internationally, but for Canada, is this bill the way it should be? Um, do you have any remaining concerns you'd like to elaborate on that we haven't addressed so far? Um, in reviewing the bill, there's nothing that we would stand against. We, we are supportive of the spirit of the bill overall. So would we propose any amendments? Not at this time. The, the same for us. Uh, this bill was was developed in consultation with uh, you know with business with labor. Uh, as I as I mentioned in my remarks, the Canadian Chamber of Commerce uh, was heavily heavily involved. Um, so at this the same you know it's for us it's more at this point uh, the spirit uh, and there's nothing we 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 would recommend changing at at this point. Senator Moody. Thank you, Madam Chair. And in anticipation of your arrival, I was going to ask you a question. So, <laughs> we spent a lot of time uh, during this uh, committee meeting so far trying to understand the concept and the value mm -hmm. of social dialogue. What I'd like to shift to is to try to understand how we measure success. 
We've heard before that this is somewhat difficult in this area, perhaps impossible. I'm hoping that you may be familiar with some areas, uh, perhaps globally, where this, um, there are examples of how we can look at um, and measure, what we can apply to measure success, understand the effectiveness of the council, should it be put in place. Um, can you tell us if, you, if you're aware of any any uh, jurisdictions where there might be some examples Canada could apply? I think that would be uh, perhaps part of the, the initial conversation, something to, that would need to be determined by the members uh, of, of this council together with, with the commissioners. Um, yeah, I, for me, mainly is, is around this ideal of through building understanding, perhaps reaching consensus when it comes to you know skills, training, like all these all these things, and collaboration. I think um, effective collaboration that would be a, a measure of success. But kind of like a specific issues, I I'm not sure. I can I can answer that. I think that would need to be part of the, of the conversation of the members uh, of the council. Um, we don't have any performance indicators or measures of success to suggest. Um, the Quebec example that was referenced is a form of dialogue, so it could be interesting to see how Quebec has measured success in the past, but we can't speak to uh, or propose specific measures. Great, thank you. Any follow-up, Senator Moody? I, I guess from, from where I sit as a, a medical person, sometimes it's not that clear how to, use, to, to apply a performance indicator, and you, you sometimes need to use surrogates, and um, it could be numbers of, of um, successful agreements that are reached and compare it over time. But um, simple things that, have we ever in, your, in, the, in this area thought about this so that we can track more effectively, does this work and it becomes something that we can apply and generalize and scale up more effectively? That's a, that's a very good comment. And actually, CFIB, we have been recommending for many years that we improve uh, transparency and uh, um, um, uh, that we implement you know, more best practices. For example, uh, uh, through the employment insurance program, there's a lot of money that is sent to provinces for training purposes, right? Um, you know, it's 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 a bit uh, um, it's not clear uh, the success uh, of those training programs. Uh, it's unclear how uh, the money spent is actually. Uh, uh, used uh, on the ground. It's, it can be quite opaque and difficult to find the information. Um, and so maybe the value, one of the value of the council would be to have a space where you can have those conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the need of specific provinces uh, that they may have on training. Uh, create uh, a, a structure where you can uh, uh, discuss this, you know, uh, in subsequent meetings and kind of follow up on things. Uh, uh, but uh, right now, uh, there's no uh, such place, or if it exists, uh, uh, I'm not aware <laughs> of it. <laughs> Any further comments? Thank you, Senator, uh, Senator Moody, followed by Senator Petticler. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I would like to explore further your comments around the potential unintended impact of uh, this legislation on the minister's uh, responsibility to determine policy. Um, um, you, you say he makes policy, the minister make, makes policy changes and reports out, and that's his function. It's part of his, his role. When you look at this legislation, what clarification is needed to ensure that this concern that you raise is not realized?
So that, that forces you, unfortunately, to identify where you think specifically the problem arises and, and say how this could be fixed. Maybe I'll jump in for one second here. I think one of the issues that I think um, is being alluded to here is the impact on the fiscal framework of the government with respect to it. So there is the Minister of Employment and Social Development, but also the Minister of Finance, which has a role in the EI Act of establishing the EI uh, premium rate because the EI operating account itself is a is a notional tracking account that's consolidated onto the books of the, of the federal government through the Consolidated Revenue Fund. So in some of these decision-making powers, uh, there, there are cost implications to it. Um, so in some of these roles, I think that's part of the clarification we made is, is, is an advisory role, but also uh, assuring that the role the minister takes in terms of working with the minister of finance, ensuring that the costs of the program are also thought about in terms of how they impact the, the, uh, the uh, public accounts of, of the government. I'm sorry, are you, follow-up, please, Mana? Are you saying that this is going to be a cost there's going to be an additional cost to having a tripartite council. And sorry, this legislation provides what additional? No, I'm, I'm talking about the role of the minister in making decisions with respect to policy because they have implications for cost with respect to how they're rolled up into the impact in the program. Mm -hmm. Not oh. the cost of the uh, yeah, not that not not that the council itself, uh, the cost of the council itself. But linking back to an unintended consequence of this council. Um, again, I'm not seeing what the unintended impact might be. And if you can clarify that for us, because clearly the minister's decisions impacts cost. And yes, that's his role, that's his purview, but in terms of the unintended consequence? Right. right. Um, so uh, just like actually going back to the costs, um, so, uh, uh, you know, again, based on our understanding of what's in uh, Bill S-244, the uh, proposed governor and council appointees uh, would not be paid, so there would be no cost from that. Uh, however, uh, it is, um, you know, based on the department's experience in uh, establishing uh, other advisory committees, um, there may be uh, associated costs with um, uh, establishing a, you know, a, a committee like this um, related to its establishment, but then also its ongoing administration, and so corporate and secretariat costs. Um, at this point, we cannot uh, confirm that. We would uh, need more and more detail, but uh, just again, based on our experience uh, as a department uh, with you know, establishing advisory committees, uh, there, are, there may be uh, unintended uh, costs. No, but I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kay, that would be right. Um, Senator Petticler followed by Senator...